Hello InfoBruson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about black holes once again, because yet another study might have found a resolution to a relatively old mystery. The mystery of the origin of certain supermassive black holes, or more specifically, how smaller black holes, these so-called intermediate mass black holes, can with time and through the absorption of a lot of mass, turn into various massive giants we're observing across the universe. With certain black holes, as you know from some of the previous videos that you can find somewhere in the description below, reaching masses of billions of masses of the Sun. That's basically thousands of times more massive than the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy. But it's always been a bit of a mystery how they grow so large and where exactly they actually form. With the other mystery being the lack of information or the lack of evidence for the existence of the actual process of growth. So basically, what feeds these black holes and does so really fast in order to create these tremendously large giants? The mystery that's been bugging scientists for a very long time. And one of the pieces of this mystery was, of course, the lack of observations in regards to in-between mass black holes, these so-called intermediate mass black holes. The black holes we discussed in some of the previous videos whose origin only recently became more apparent as we started discovering their signs across the universe. For example, there is an intermediate mass black hole in the middle of this spiral galaxy with a relatively long name, Arax J1140.1 plus 0307. And another one probably located inside the globular cluster known as M31 G1. But how they formed, and more importantly, how they then turned into supermassive black holes, that's of course the mystery that we couldn't really answer until relatively recently. With the answers finally coming from the observations of the iconic X-ray telescope known as Chandra, the most sensitive X-ray telescope ever produced. The telescope that in the past allowed us to detect some really interesting things happening around distant black holes, such as for example a destruction of a single star, the so-called tidal disruption event. With some of these tidal disruption events even involving some unusual objects, such as a white dwarf that in theory can produce a very very powerful explosion that sometimes is referred to as an F-bot. That's of course one of the explanations for how this happens. But in a more recent study, the scientists decided to take a look at 108 different galaxies using both Chandra observations and some of the observations from other telescopes such as the Hubble telescope to try to compare various dense star clusters with the X-ray emissions coming from those clusters. Because at least in theory, if we detect a really really dense cluster that also seems to produce a tremendous amount of X-rays, usually this would imply only one thing. Something really really massive is eating up a lot of mass on the inside and is producing all of these X-rays. And the only explanation for this is of course a massive black hole with all of this also based on theories involving what's known as a nuclear star cluster, NSC for short. Here is one inside our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And these are usually star clusters with very high density and really high luminosity, normally located relatively close to the center of the galaxy. With a lot of these objects resembling a typical global cluster, and you can learn more about these in some of the previous videos right there or in the description but normally much denser, containing a lot more stars and sometimes even mass equivalent to a typical supermassive black hole, millions or sometimes several hundred millions masses of the Sun. And because of this, many stars in these regions will usually orbit around one another or basically around the central region very fast. The faster they orbit, the more likely they're going to start colliding and creating a lot of chaos. And so theoretically, if we actually find a bunch of these nuclear star clusters that do have very high velocity of stars within them, what's known as the dispersion velocity, there is actually a high chance that many of them are actively producing very massive black holes. Simply through the process of the central black hole in a cluster, causing a lot of destruction and a lot of chaos, with a lot of matter eventually falling into it and basically causing even more chaos as a result. In the past, the theory predicted that any kind of a nuclear cluster whose dispersion velocity is approximately 40 km per second or higher, or basically where the average speed of stars is 40 km per second, would usually start producing these relatively massive black holes. But this was based on different models and different theories and was never really officially proven or seen anywhere. But now the scientists decided to try to prove this. 
they took a look at a bunch of different galaxies, 108 as I mentioned, and took a look at certain regions where there are very dense, very highly clustered regions, specifically nuclear star clusters with a lot of really, really massive stars at high velocities moving around one another, a very high dispersion velocity. In most cases, anything that had velocity of over 40 km per second would always contain a powerful X-ray source right in their center. Without exception, the vast majority of them had something going on, and that something is very likely some sort of an intermediate mass black hole absorbing anywhere from hundreds to even thousands masses of the sun and growing more massive every year, becoming a supermassive black hole. With quite a lot of these unusual clusters discovered in various galaxies, and some galaxies even containing several in various regions. Which of course means that first of all intermediate mass black holes definitely exist and definitely grow really fast, and also explains how supermassive black holes come to be and how they can eventually completely destroy various clusters and possibly even collide with the central black hole giving it even more mass. But one of the more important discoveries in this case is the fact that all of this is happening in galaxies relatively close to us. None of this is in those regions in the beginning of the universe. Which of course suggests that supermassive black holes can even grow to their massive size right now. It's not something that only happened back in the days and it's not something that's going to stop anytime soon. This definitely seems to be an ongoing process and it seems to mostly rely on these nuclear star clusters which very likely then become global clusters as they lose some of the mass, most likely due to these central black holes. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe the collision between various global clusters and their approach to the central black hole causes them to turn into nuclear star clusters, which then results in the formation of the central black hole that becomes very destructive to the other stars. And because a typical nuclear star cluster seems to contain a mix of young and old stars, this explanation might make a little bit more sense, although the actual nature of these unusual objects is still not entirely clear. But what is clear is that normally they are the most massive and the most dense star cluster objects in typical galaxies, and more importantly they usually contain some kind of a black hole in the middle, and they also contain enough mass to, in theory, produce a supermassive black hole. And this study seems to definitively show that this is the case. A typical dense cluster with a lot of different stars colliding and moving around really fast will usually have some kind of a central X-ray region with very high power, very likely some kind of a massive black hole. With the process eventually stopping once there are no more stars left or once all of this mass sort of solidifies in the center with only some stars remaining on the outskirts. But I guess the important part from all of this is that all of this kind of also connects to some of the previous detections from the iconic LIGO that detected various gravitational waves from objects that seem to be somewhat too massive to exist. So in this case intermediate mass black holes. And it's actually quite likely that it might have happened in the region very similar to what was seen in the study. So basically some kind of a massive coalition of different black holes and different stars, really massive stars, located in some kind of a nuclear star cluster where a lot of collisions happen really fast and the black holes end up growing faster and faster as they accumulate more mass. But I guess more importantly, the study also proves that we can study supermassive black holes and their growth and their development using some of the nearby galaxies and not just the galaxies at the edge of the observable universe. We can literally look at these nuclear star clusters in any one of these galaxies from the study and try to analyze how black holes grow and what exactly happens to them in order to then turn into these massive giants in the center. Something I'm sure will end up being a new study in the next few years. But I guess until then, a pretty remarkable discovery, a pretty interesting discovery and a great confirmation of an old theory of the formation of supermassive black holes from intermediate mass black holes and also a confirmation that these intermediate mass black holes seem to be pretty much everywhere. But I guess for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Once there are some updates or we learn something else about all of this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out some of the other videos about IMBH or intermediate mass black holes and support this channel Patreon, maybe join the channel membership or buy one of the wonderful person t-shirts in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.